So today we're going to be looking at a scenario where Germany starts another empire. Now this empire isn't going to have the same ideology as Germany did in World War II. Instead, it's going to be having a monarch. Also, for a quick note, NATO and the UN and other major alliances around the world have all been dissolved, so it's every country for itself. If you enjoy this video, make sure to leave a like on it and subscribe to the channel if you're new. And let's go ahead and get started. So, zooming out from Germany, we have ourselves a blank world map with each country on its own. Now, obviously, territories are still controlled by other countries. So, if Germany were to try to invade French Guiana, then France would declare war on Germany. So that still applies. Anyway, let's go ahead and say that a monarch won in the German elections. And Germany is once again a monarchy. So they're going to be uh, doing monarch stuff. So the monarch of Germany now wants to take control of some of its old lands. Now these lands are going to include lands over here in Poland. Some lands over here in Denmark. And Alsace-Lorraine. So the first thing that Germany does is declare war on Denmark. So Germany is going to probably push up into Denmark and take over the piece of land that they want. From there, they might continue invading, but they would most likely try to sue for peace and get that piece of land back. So Germany starts to push upwards and takes control of southern Denmark. Now, this is basically using the only military that Germany has. In real life, Germany doesn't have that big of a military. It's more of a defensive military. Therefore, going into offense would be pretty hard for Germans. But since Denmark is also a pretty small country with a pretty small uh, military, uh, maybe they'd be equally matched. But Germany is also an economical power. Therefore, they'd be able to like make more military equipment, recruit more soldiers, so they'd most likely have the advantage here. Anyway, Germany continues to push upwards, taking a little bit more than what they need, and eventually they start to negotiate with Denmark. Denmark agrees to release its southern portion of itself. Now, I know the name for it. It's like Holstein or something like that. I, I'm very bad with pronouncing like other countries' provinces and stuff. So I'm not going to attempt to say it. Alsace-Lorraine. See, I, I can't do it. I was very tempted to not pronounce this, but then I know a lot of people would be like, oh, well, it's called this. And I'd be like, yeah, I know. Anyway, here we have the peace treaty with Germany taking this southern Danish area and also taking the island of Bornholm. So with that, we have peace between the two countries and Germany has a little bit of its old imperial land back. From here, Germany starts to look around and really they can only either fight France or Poland. And France is really strong and Poland is also pretty strong. But uh, when comparing the two, obviously Poland is going to be a little bit weaker. Now the problem with this is Germany doesn't have that big of a military. So they start to conscript and recruit soldiers who are willing to serve their country. Now Germany has a big population of around 83 million. So they'd obviously be able to get a lot of people to join the military. And end up getting around 500,000 army soldiers to join. This isn't including pilots and navy operators and things like that. So this is just uh, manpower. So now with a beefed up military, they start to threaten Poland and send an ultimum over to them. The ultimum, of course, is to annex all of these lands. Uh, that's a lot of Poland. That's about half Poland. So really, it's kind of like, why would you accept that ultimum? And logically, Poland doesn't accept it and Germany declares war on Poland. Now, this isn't a surprise to anyone because Germany tends to do this a lot in history, declaring war on Poland. And uh, so, uh, yeah. So Germany starts another push into Poland. Now, once again, NATO doesn't exist. There's no one guaranteeing Poland. So Poland is on their own. This is a 1v1 situation. Now, obviously, there is a great amount of time between the uh, recruiting stage of Germany and the war on Poland. It's not going to like be recruiting citizens and then right away they're going to be ready. There's obviously going to be years of training. So this takes place a little bit after the uh, recruitment of the German soldiers. Anyway, Germany starts to push into Poland, taking lots of their land over here in the west. The German Navy is also off the coast of Poland. Now, Germans are probably going to be making their own weapons and probably also making their own ships and stuff, but they're probably also buying from other countries such as the US and Russia. Anyway, the German Navy and the German Air Force are both providing support for the troops on land. As Germany starts to push further into Poland, other countries around Germany are seeing that, hey, this might not be a good thing because if Germany takes out Poland, then they're going to be a lot stronger. So we have the Czech Republic declaring war on Germany in aid of Poland. This is mostly to protect themselves from being invaded by Germany, but the Czech army is pretty strong with only about 26,000 military uh, personnel. So it's going to like slow down Germany, but it's also going to like 
backfire. So a small amount of Czech soldiers start to push into these sides of Germany. Now Germany has to rearrange from this, which gives Poland an opportunity to also push back Germany. But like I said, this is probably going to backfire for the Czechs as the German army starts to push back the Czech army. As the Germans start to push into the Czech Republic, it provides a chance for Poland to also push back Germany up north. So Poland almost manages to completely kick out the Germans from their country. Down south, the Germans manage to capture Prague as the Czech Republic now is falling apart. With that comes the surrender of the country and a even bigger front for Poland to worry about. Some small naval landings are made along the coast of Poland. Now these aren't significant uh, military landings. These are just small ones to kind of help the front along here up the coast. But they do help nonetheless as Germany now captures a majority of Poland's coast. From here, Germany starts to push down and over, connecting with Kaliningrad. And down here in the southwest, Germany is starting to push up. Poland makes a counteroffensive up north here and manages to cut off Germany from the rest of Germany. That sounded weird. And also start to push back very lightly. The Germans use this to their advantage and manage to cut off the Polish forces up north here from the rest of Poland and push in and manage to capture all of the army officials. From here, they start to push south and east and capture the country's capital of Warsaw. The Polish government and the Polish army keep fighting though until eventually they are squeezed down to this, in which they finally surrender. With that, the German-Czecho-Polish War is now over. When it comes to the peace treaty, this is what we end up with. Down here in Czechia, we have the Germans taking over a little bit of the country. Now, they were kind of spared. They didn't take over the entire thing. I'm pretty sure Prague is like right here, so they still have their capital. For reference, this is about how much they took. Now, in a war, Germany would probably be able to capture Kaliningrad, but overall, they probably wouldn't be able to take on Russia. Russia would probably just move through Belarus and over into Poland and then over into Germany because, you know, Belarus is a Russian ally and Poland probably wants revenge so they'd allow Russian troops to pass through. So instead of making the mistake they've made in every world war, they don't go to war with Russia. They also don't make the mistake of going to war with France. Now, if this Germany were to go to war with France, they'd most likely lose because once again, France has a very big military and is a military power. Once again, Germany is trying to expand, so they start to look down here towards the Mediterranean and want to reconquer the lands they once had under the German Confederation. Basically, these lands included about all of Austria down here into Slovenia and this little part of Croatia. It also included this little part of Italy, but I don't think Germany wants to fight a war with another power because they just got done fighting uh, Poland, so they're probably a little bit weak. Anyway, though, they do go to war with Austria. At first, they push down and cut off Austria's panhandle. From here, they start to storm into mainland Austria, avoiding the Alp Mountains and pushing over towards Vienna. Now, Austria doesn't show much resistance here, and as they capture the city of Vienna, Austria surrenders to Germany. So instead of taking all of Austria, Germany takes about half of it, which leaves Austria with their capital, Vienna. And uh, now we have another small country over here next to the Czech Republic. So now Germany has one last nation to fight before they gain access over here to the Adriatic Sea, and that is Slovenia. As soon as they declare war on Slovenia, they opt to surrender and see the land that they want. So now we have Germany having access to the Adriatic Sea, although it is very little, it is still access. And Germany even decided that they don't want to go to war with Croatia over this small piece of land. So now over here in Central Europe, we have a lot of small countries that are weak. In order to save each other, they all unite under one country. Now this country is going to be very diverse as it contains both German, Czech, and Slovenian. But they probably all agree that they hate Germany, so they'll probably get along in the end. Now I know Austrian Empire didn't really work out, but maybe this one will. I mean, if he even wanted to, we could throw in Hungary and then we have... Austria-Hungary. So for Germany's final European conquest, they're going to be taking on the Lowlands. But in this war, they're also going to have an ally, which is surprisingly France. Now what France wants to do is push up into Belgium and take over the French-speaking part, and also take over Luxembourg. Now at first, Germany and France both have disputes over who gets Luxembourg, but uh, according to Google, Luxembourg has more French than German speakers, therefore France is going to be getting Luxembourg. So war is declared as all three of these nations are now at war with France and Germany. Now you can imagine that this war is probably going to go by pretty quickly. Uh, both France and Germany are super strong, and these countries' militaries aren't that big. So after capturing both the Netherlands and Luxembourg, they make a peace deal. So looking at Germany here, we have a very big Germany compared to what it was once in history. They now occupy all of the Netherlands, a little bit of northern Belgium, a little bit of Denmark, a little bit of Poland, Austria, Czechia, and Slovenia. So just like that, we have a new German empire. Now, obviously it's probably not going to work you know they forcibly invaded poland and they forcibly invaded the netherlands and you know all those countries so they're probably going to rise up and revolt and this will probably collapse within the next 30 years once again this is a monarch germany not a world war ii germany so 
don't worry about that. And yeah, so now we have a German empire. This video was kind of a follow-up to my video where the US had an empire, except this time this was focusing on uh, present history going into future history, whereas the American video was focused on going from past history to present history. Now, if you watch both of these videos, I want you guys to tell me which one you like better. So the American one was uh, alternative history, and then this one was technically alternative future. Also in the comments, I want you guys to tell me what other countries you want me to turn into empires. I was thinking of doing like maybe Turkey or Canada or the UK or France or something like that. If you like this video, make sure to leave a like on it and subscribe to the channel if you're new. That really helps me out. I have a Discord server in the description of this video where I'm trying to get up to a thousand members right now. I think we're at like 930 right now, so we're only 70 away. And if we get to a thousand members, that'd be pretty cool. It's a pretty fun community, so if you want to join it, once again, there's a link for it in the description. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next video.